guys. Welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I have the story for you. This story, which I'm about to go over, is truly something out of the Jerry Springer show. It's about a guy, he is presently in his mid-40s, and he shares this story from like 10 years ago when he was obviously in his mid-30s, and got involved with a woman who was older than him and definitely has many, 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 many problems. And eventually, our guy learns the hard way why you don't get involved with these types of women. But also, guys, you're going to see many lessons are many things I talk about are reiterated in the story. Like, uh, obviously, you don't put your D in crazy. You avoid women that obviously have a bazillion red flags. How they always come back, even if they break up with you when they want something, that type of thing. And our guy, eventually, in the end, learns a lot of the things, but has to go through a whole lot of crap to get there. A lot of crap is going to have you guys shaking your head and laughing at him. But you know what? You got to go through these stories sometimes to learn something. And this this really is a public service announcement of what not to do. Now, I know a lot of you guys feel inclined to, you know, go watch another video at this point because you want to hear one of these stories. But I encourage you to listen to this because this will be one of these things real life that we're like, how can somebody be this crazy? How can somebody get involved with someone this crazy? Well, there are people out there that do that. So <laughs> that'd be a very good one here. Obviously, you can see it's a longer video, half an hour, but definitely worth your time, something to learn about. And at the end of the day, we all know there's a reason the Jerry Springer show and shows like that, Mari Povich and whatever back in the day, were so successful because, well, <laughs> you, 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 you simply just can't turn away when you hear these types of things. And you guys will see exactly what I'm talking about. But again, our guy will learn something mostly at the end of this tale. It says, hello, SSM. I started watching your channel around 2020 and still do to this day. The stories are entertaining, along with the advice and wisdom in them. This takes place back in 2015, when I was in my mid-30s and hadn't dated very much. The names have been uh, have been changed. Yeah, we're going to be able to tell real quick that uh, you hadn't had a lot of dating and relationship experience, experience with women, given the craziness of the story. Uh, I didn't really date when I was in my 20s due to work and being overweight at the time, but ended up losing the weight after hitting 30. Well, good for you for losing the weight. I ended up hooking up with a woman in April. She was in her mid-40s at the time and lived in the town next over. She was married, which I did not know at the time, and had two grown kids with a grandkid on the way. Bro, <clears throat> I get that you didn't have a lot of experience, but you're in your 30s, you lost a ton of weight, and you're dating a chick in her 40s with a couple kids and a, gr and a grandkid on the way? Really? Now, were you aware of all those kids, or just you weren't aware of any of these things? That's what I'm a little curious about, but... My God. She worked at a state agency and liked her job. Looking back, after having a, over a four-year relationship and 10-year difference in age, I should have gotten involved with her and dealt with more drama than it was worth. I know many smacks are needed. Well, bro, this is why <clears throat> there's a balance when you're young. When you're young, you got to focus on your grind, your purpose, making yourself in this world, guys. But it's also important if you're a relationship guy, you got a little experience along the way. The, girl, the dating, obviously, is, is at the bottom of the list of priorities, but just a little experience. So that way, later on, when you've gotten where you wanted to get get to be, and you start uh, dating because you actually want to meet a girl, hopefully because you want a family, if that's what you want, that you don't pick the first girl you get. And one that's 10 years old and has all these red flags and issues. You know? Now, I get he was overweight for a long time. That, that definitely can shatter one's self-esteem for a long time but and i think you guys get what i'm coming from here but you gotta have a little experience in that area otherwise this can happen <clears throat> there were a lot of red flags that having been through it i know better now i started with it started with hooking up with her a couple times a week and i'll admit that i'm crap for not t ending it when i did and when i found out she was married smack bro i get that you had a little experience but eventually finding out that she was married and you're still hooking up with her, that's, a, that's inexcusable. And you knew better. Come on here. But you were obviously loving getting some, and that was the only... You probably, you probably thought that was all you're worth. And then you're worth a lot more than that. So you brought a lot of this crap on yourself. A week later, crap hit the fan when I got a call late at night from her, from her screaming that he was trying to off her. Oh, boy. I asked who, who, uh, who was trying to off her, and she told me her husband. If I got that call now, I wouldn't deal with it and tell her to call 911. But at the time, I was in the blue pill, white knight way of thinking. Yeah, where'd that get you? And I might add, at that time, did you know she was she was married at that point? And you're still, really? And if he's 
I don't know, unleashing hell upon her because finding out she's cheating on him, in a, in a way, you can't blame for being pissed off. Now, obviously, you shouldn't be trying to off her, but then again, that's her telling you this. I told you guys this story was out there. She went to stay with her friend in the next town over for hers. Later, she told me the story that she was in bed with her husband, getting a back massage from him, but and said my name, John, instead of her husband's name. I would have put a pastor to do that on purpose, just to start some drama. She claimed that he tried to run her over with his truck after throwing her out of the house. <laughs> I guess I shouldn't laugh at that, but I'm just trying to picture that whole scene going on. While living in her friend's house, she still make time to come over and see me over an hour away. She separated from her husband and started chasing me. I've never been chased by a woman before, and it did feel good with a boost to the ego. A month later, she moved into an apartment in the same city that I lived in. Uh, she was chasing after you because obviously she now no longer had her husband to support her, so she needed you. Come on here, dude. Her daughter, Melissa, lived on the other side of town with her husband, Tony, and his family. Everything was good for about a couple months when she stayed at my place and I stayed at hers. There you go. She didn't talk well about her ex, and she went on playing the victim for a while, even a year after he had a pass from cancer some years later. She cried a lot the first year we were together. I questioned how many were real or manipulation tactics with crocodile tears to get her way. Well, as I always say, Hobag Handbook Chapter 2, and I'm sure they were all manipulated. If she was cheating on him with you, believe me, there's, there's there's no her feeling bad for him. Please, she was putting on the waterwork so you'd feel bad and she could manipulate you to get what she wanted. And she was right. Again, guys, you can see why it's important for guys that are relationship guys to get some experience when they're younger if they can. Grind and purpose and making something yourself is number one, guys. Don't get me wrong, like I said. But after your bros and your dog and your family and the gym, and that's not necessarily in that order, then you can throw women in there for dating and experience for your relationship, guys. Otherwise, you could be like this. He says here, My father ended himself a couple months after getting divorced from his second wife. Good God, dude. What's up with your, the people you surround yourself with? I'm sorry it happened to your dad, but really. I went to check on him after getting a strange text from him that he didn't feel right. We found him unresponsive and not breathing. I started giving him CPR while April called 911. The paramedics worked on him, but they could not revive him. After that, I shut down and I felt lost. I was close to my father before, before he passed. I felt like I wasn't really there during the funeral, probably because I was still in shock at the time. Well, bro, nobody can blame you. For being in shock and being messed up over this. Of course, it's understandable. And you were a young guy and all that, and obviously it came out of nowhere. I was still dealing with my father's death when my when her daughter Melissa started having issues with her in-laws, Tony's family, and moved into April's apartment with Tony and their baby. Oh my god, this is like out of Springer. April came to live at my place for a couple months while Melissa stayed at her place to find an apartment of their own. I know, smack, yeah. I was helping clean up my father's place when April found out that there was pending accusations of illegal substance use and abuse against her, Melissa and me. Oh, great. Now we're going to throw drugs in the mix? Which later was, was dismissed but damaged her reputation while she worked and left her, her uh, on desk duty for months afterwards. We figured out it was more li than likely Tony's family that made the accusations since, surprisingly, they didn't mention Tony. I had a female friend that I met a year earlier before meeting April. Let's call her Kathy. She was in her late 20s at the time with a few extra pounds. Define a few extra pounds. Usually a few extra pounds means a few extra hundred pounds. I could write another story just about Kathy, which I might do later, but that's for another time. Well, knock yourself out. We could use another crazy story over here. I was permanently in the friend zone with Kathy and dodged a bullet, but never becoming more than that with her. It was Kathy's birthday when I was invited to her party and decided to bring April with me. Oh, gee. What can go wrong now? Upon April meeting Kathy, there was a visible tension between the two. More of a dislike bordering on hate. We didn't stay long at the party since April wanted to leave, not long after the cake was cut. Later on, Kathy told me what she thought of April in private, and vice versa with April telling me about Kathy. It's funny how they both were accurate about each other. After that, I never mentioned or talked about either one of them in the, uh, the other's company. You just liked it. I'm sure you liked being in the middle of two chicks that didn't like each other and obviously, you know, were, you know, being possessive and uh, of you and all that. 
Come on here. You like that. Just like you said, you like the attention you're getting and the chasing from April. Bro, some people just love drama. And it ain't just women. There are men that like drama. and they don't, Or they at least don't know any better. You know, they think that drama and turmoil means that somebody cares about them or something like that. No. During most of the relationship, I was love-bombed and told how she missed me when I wasn't staying in her place with her. I now know this is a possible synonym of borderline personality disorder. More like borderline bitch disorder. That's what it usually is. She'd get very insecure and jealous if I talked to any customers or friends that were female or used manipulation tactics to separate me from my friends. She wouldn't spend much time around my mother, and when she did, she'd tell me how my mother was putting me down. Well, this is classic narcissistic behavior, trying to put a big gap between you and your friends and your loved ones and all that. Not to mention, fact, bro, why are you involved with this woman? Which it didn't occur to you if she was cheating on her husband that she'll cheat on you, along with all the other nasty qualities that she has. But again, this guy here didn't get a lot of experience dating when he was younger and was taking any attention he could get. Obviously, he came from a broken home because his dad was married twice or something like that. So he didn't have a good role model. This is why role model is important, guys. You can all see the craziness here. This is why I interrupt and point these things out to help guys learn. <clears throat> I didn't fall for that, and it made it clear she wasn't going to push me away from my family. Well, then why didn't she ditch the bitch? This day, uh, the day that my mother got into a bad fender bender around some construction that totaled her car, April ended up rolling her car later that day. Bro, it seems like anybody around you, chaos just fo follows you wherever you go and has a ripple effect on anybody comes near you. <clears throat> Hope you don't live near South Florida. I don't need any of your bad luck. Uh, she called me after it happened to let me know that she was okay, but called her ex-husband to come pick her up. Uh-huh. The story was, she was texting while driving on a small road in between towns and ran off the road only to overcorrect and roll her car, going at least 70 miles per hour. How dumb can you be to A, text and drive, let alone be driving so-called 70 miles an hour on a small road and texting, and then you rolled the car. I mean, how stupid is that? And again, this is her story, if that was true. <clears throat> she wasn't well after the accident, with a bump on the head, and didn't understand how she got upside down in her car. I'm thinking she probably had a minor concussion from the wreck that included some amnesia. I don't know, maybe like the big bump to her head will knock some sense into her. Maybe knock, uh, knock her out of her borderline bitch disorder, I don't know. The night she wanted me to leave her apartment, but I didn't, sh didn't since she was showing signs of severe depression with the possibility of offing herself. I just lost my father some months ago before, and I wasn't going to lose her the same way. <clears throat> Later, she confessed to me that she was planning on offing herself if I, had, if I had left that night after the wreck and thanked me for staying. Now you're, you're going to be in a constant state of trying to make sure she doesn't off herself. Basically being on her best, your best behavior, walking on eggshells around you. She knows this, dude. I ended, up getting a, I ended up getting a car for my father's estate and offered my old car for her to travel to and from work. She ended up buying it off me later on. Uh, at, least she, at least she paid for it. I will admit that she could cook some good food and I would usually help her with her cooking. Over the four year span of the relationship, she moved six times, not staying at any place longer than a year. Bro. How many signs do you need this woman is unstable? She's a nut job on so many fronts. She Six times in four years? Moving's a pain in the ass. I mean, would she just have like a fucking, like, a suitcase and just some clothes and, and, and a cot or something? I mean, come on here. <clears throat> it was like she was running from something. There were a few apartments she would skip out on the lease and move out. That sounds like an ideal girlfriend to you. And she's a mother. And she raised some kids. And she's a grandmother. One was bad enough that I didn't blame her for moving. When she found an apartment close to where I lived, she got rejected due to owing money from violating previous lease agreements. She blamed everyone else but didn't have any accountability for her own actions. I told her the facts of what happened, which turned her fury on me. Yeah, the old joke about women and accountability. Again, bro, at this point, nobody feels bad for you. But I'm sharing this, you know, because it's entertaining and guys can learn from it. <clears throat> it was around the third year that I felt like I had to walk on eggshells around here. I know, smack. Yeah, smack. It's Monday morning. I slept like crap last night, so I'm not with it with all the smacks. I probably could have smacked them ten times earlier. 
but I know you guys are. Wherever you guys are, if I'm missing a snack, a smack because I'm tired and I haven't had coffee yet, you smack him. He'll feel it. Bro, walking on eggshells. No. Uh, anything small that would set her off or anyone around her became her target. Who cares? Walk away. I'm sure you got other things going on in your life. She complained many times about how her toxic co-workers were. A little after a year into the relationship, she told me that she'd been abused when she was young. Her dad was, wasn't her biological father and had many more than a few stepfathers. Some were abusive. Well, let's just say that was true. Okay, that's terrible. No, no child should go through that. But, and I know it impacts people's lives, but still, you know, what happens in your childhood is not your fault. What happens as an adult, that is your fault. And a lot of people don't agree with me on that and I uh, think I'm being harsh, but it is what it is, guys. You got to move past your shit and get help. And I don't want to hear some people can't get help. Come on here. Actions can be taken, guys. She was the middle child in between three brothers and had different fathers. She told me that her older brother had done things to her. She claimed that her mother had been married so many times that she could not be allowed to marry again in this state. Not sure she's joking or being serious about that. Flip a coin. Her family's fucked up. And notice that your family had problems too. So to no surprise, you're both drawn to each other and create more drama. She didn't have a good relationship with her mother, and when one would reach out, the other would find something small to go off about. Melissa would come up with a drama on a regular basis, probably due to some kind of personality disorder. Well, all women love drama, but the ones that really create it, because that's all they know, yeah, they're fucked up. Again, bro, at this juncture, you get what you deserve. That's why I tell you guys, you know, you, you're with them for a while before you get serious. Look for the red flags. If there's, their family life is screwed up, that tells you everything. April's son, Ted, would usually keep to himself and stay away and out of the drama when he could. <clears throat> well, it seems like Ted is the only person with a brain in this whole story as of, as of yet. April tried to live in the same apartment building as her daughter, Melissa, which only caused more drama and didn't work out well. She couldn't save any money, and when she had any, Melissa knew it would always, would always ask for money to buy her stuff or stuff for the grandkid. Shocker. So, let's review here. She's cheating on her husband. She was... Sought after by the police for potential substance abuse, which is probably true. She's trying to separate you and ca cause a rift between your friends and your mom and all that. What else? She's lived in six places in four years. Or four, yeah, six places in four years. Can't get kicked out of places. Owes money. Can't keep money. Yeah, she's a real catch. I don't hear anything about her body. I mean, she must be giving you the most magnificent BJs ever. But I might be willing to bet you she's probably not giving you much at all. Although you did mention she's a good cook, so we'll give her one thing. April would warn me against loaning money to her kids since one had a history of never paying loans back. There'd be times that I'd get a call from payday loan companies asking me if I knew the whereabouts of Melissa or Tony. Uh, and you have one generation... What, what, yeah, her, she, she's here. She's Her crazy family has her. And then she then has another generation of fucking wonderful uh, members of society. And then they'll have another generation of wonderful members of society. That's how it works. It's just... Is people shouldn't breed. The last year of the relationship, she started regularly smoking substances obtained from Tony that I knew about. I didn't join in since it doesn't appeal to me and I don't like the smell. She would say that it wasn't for me. She'd be an alcoholic. I didn't drink, but she did. Oh, let's add the, those two things to the list. Now she's smoking all the time and uh, she's an alcoholic. Or he said she wouldn't be an alcoholic. Well, she probably is anyway. I have, a fam I have a family history of alcoholism, and I didn't want to be part of that. Early on, she introduced me to her work of, her work of colleagues and friends, but that all changed when she moved to the city that I lived in. It's like she was embarrassed to be seen with me. She's embarrassed to be seen with you. How about you be embarrassed to be seen with her? I suspected that she had guys over when I wasn't there, but I didn't want to seem insecure. Another smack. Yeah, smack. Of course she's cheating on you. She was cheating on her husband with you. Why do you think she would cheat on other guys on you. I mean, really. And you didn't want to challenge her because you didn't want to make her mad. She played the so that's what you think of me manipulation tactic when I try to break up and leave. If anybody tries that on me now, I'd say yes or nothing at all and walk away. I learned that when she needs some space or some time apart, that means she's going to go have 
<clears throat> or has to go get with another guy, but wants to keep me along if she doesn't work out with them. Monkey branching, I think that's what it's called. Like she's any kind of catch. I mean, she's also in her 40s, has kids, she's a grandma, drinks, smokes, all these other things. But at the end of the day, there's always some dumb guy who's going to fuck some ugly bitch. And maybe for her age, she's okay, and you're just taking what you can get. But even then, the crazy goes along with it. She claimed a guy graped her, but was reluctant to report him, which left me questioning her story. The last year we were together, she took on the role of a single grandmother, and I got stuck in her frame. No, you didn't get stuck. You allowed yourself to be stuck. Don't don't tell us you got stuck. See, guys, this is a learning experience. This is a don't be like this guy type of story. Every weekend, I couldn't do what I wanted to do and end up helping her take care of her feral grandkids. Many smacks are needed. My business suffered and almost dropped off completely. Smack! You aren't forced to take care of grandkids, dude. And, and you're letting her... I don't know what business you're in, but you're letting... Your business be impacted by these wackos? Around the holidays of 2018, her family was at her apartment and Melissa brought over homemade hot chocolate, which was a brew of who knows chocolate what. It didn't taste very good, but I still drank some to appease Melissa. Smack! Uh, <clears throat> now trying to appease her daughter. I was very sick the next day, stuck between bed and the toilet the whole week from Christmas to New Year's. I thought at one point it was I was at death's door. A couple months later, April moved in with Melissa, Tony, and their three kids. I moved most of her stuff. Tony helped me with moving April's bigger things. I was over there and had some chili, which made me sick like I was around the holidays. Bro. I can't be the only one hearing the story thinking... <laughs> I'm at a loss for words with all this shit you're putting up here. After getting sick at the holidays, having some hot cocoa, I would eat anything these people gave you. Trying to poison you. No one else who ate the chili got sick, which makes me suspect that it could have been intentional food poisoning. Melissa liked to manipulate April, and when the drama didn't work, she'd use April's grandson. If I ate anything there, it would be a simple, simple stuff made only by me and never out of sight. Most of the time, I would eat out if I wasn't at my place. I know Melissa still had feelings that I broke their family up, which I unintentionally did. Oh, for God's sake! Don't blame the mother. Blame you. And now you won't eat food in your own house because you're worried about them. The breakup happened a couple days before April's birthday. Thank God. The night before, she went out drinking with her friends and didn't come back until late, which made me suspicious that she did more than just drink with her friends. She asked about her present, her present, which I had already got her, but wasn't going to give her until her actual birthday. Later the next day, April and Melissa went out to get some non-alcoholic drinks. <clears throat> After coming back, Melissa told me that her mother wants to talk to me in the car, which I thought was kind of weird. In the car, she told me that she needs a break, and asked her if we were. And I asked her if we were breaking up, and she replied, "Yes." She's dumping you. I mean, oh my, she found an even bigger sucker than you. That's kind of hard to believe. I gotta say it, man, and I know you know this now because this happened many years ago. She told me that I don't need to take her take my stuff from her place, but I was done after that. Bro, you should have been celebrating. We're all celebrating. It's over. I went numb and only on an icy cold feeling remained. I quickly packed up everything I had that I had at her place and left. I broke down on the way back to my place. You broke down? I texted her later, which I shouldn't have done, and asked her why another smack is needed. She told me that she didn't know why. I left it at that and went full, no contact for a couple months. So I thought for a second your car broke down. No, you broke down crying because this crazy wacko dumped you? Guys, this is why I'm so crazy about... Working so hard to build yourself up, becoming the best you can be, feeling good about yourself, and usually that comes about through success, achieving your goals, at least setting goals, getting on the way to goals, and achieving goals so you feel good about yourself, exercising, being healthy, hanging out with good people. That way you don't allow people like this into your life and think this is all you deserve and all you're going to get, and then you break down when they break up with you. This guy should have been celebrating. <clears throat> So I kept myself busy working out, hiking, and getting a new computer set up while selling the old one. I started seeing a therapist and worked on getting myself back together. Bro, in the 27 minutes I've been doing this story here, this is you're finally doing something right. Exercising, working out, seeing a fucking therapist to figure out why you get involved with people like this. Why you, what, what is it that you, you do to attract them into your life and keep them around and keep coming back for more? Hopefully a good one will help you. 
after telling the therapist everything about April and the relationship, their feedback was April was a, was a misandrist and I needed to delete her from my life to get rid of any photos and things that reminded me of her. Yeah, guess what? You could have uh, saved yourself money and found me. But I, this is before me on YouTube. Yes, guys, you cut these people out of your life completely. Block them, no pictures, nothing, move on. Take it one day at a time. I know it's hard, but you, you can do it. The therapist told me that the story of the bigger animal taking a smaller venomous animal across a body of water and how it always ends up with the smaller one biting or stinging the bigger one and both end up drowning. I started watching YouTube and videos on the Manosphere, <clears throat> MGTOW, and Red Pill around that time. My business started to pick up again, even with the bug and the shutdowns. Yeah, your business, whatever that may be, picked up because you didn't have her screwing everything up and getting in your way. She contacted me a couple months later after the breakup to tell me she had the bug and Melissa was in the hospital. Um, not your problem. How are these people... Everybody's getting sick on the food these people eat and make. She wanted me to go visit Melissa during the bug. Oh, you mean COVID. Okay, my bad. And I did it since I was in the early days of the pandemic and didn't want to catch it. Why would you have anything... Why would you go visit her or her daughter? These fucking people. Why would you do that? You see, guys, in her mind, hey... This dipshit, and you were being a dipshit back then, put up with so much, of course he's going to come visit me in the hospital or the daughter in the hospital. We can mooch off him somehow. They always come back, guys, when they want something. Guess things didn't work out the guy she really wanted. Then a couple months later, she told me that uh, it didn't work out living with Melissa, which made me laugh since I already knew that's probably what would have happened since she's tried it before. In other words, she's hoping you'd take her back. Not because she wanted you, but because she can mooch off you. She moved to another city claiming to still want to be friends. I would reach out, I would reach out but quit after a couple times since it wasn't worth my time and made me feel like a simp when I would and should be moving on to greener pastures. Smack! So you start watching Red Pill stuff and MGTOW and probably me at that point and you were still reaching out to her. This goes to show you guys, when a guy spends his whole life being programmed to behave in a certain way, a white knight, a pleaser, nice guy, whatever, takes a long time for him, even though listening to this type of stuff, to rewire everything. Uh, which I found many greener, firmer, and younger pastures, if you get what I'm saying. I wish I could say this was the last I ever heard from her, but that's not the case. Of course she kept coming back for more, because for years, four years, you were with her, putting up with all her shit. She, In her mind, she can just bug you enough and manipulate you enough, she'll keep coming back. That's what they do, guys. And frankly, you shouldn't be getting involved with any younger, firmer, greener pastures, as you said, because you need to work on you. Around two years later, after a couple, around two years later, after another breakup with someone else, I was hanging out with my bro and some friends when my brother showed me a text from April asking for my number. Now she's bugging your friends. Tell her to fuck off. This was a couple years after the breakup and not hearing from her after she moved away. Her number was a local one and not the area code to where she moved to. I wasn't sure to text her, but my curiosity won out, and I ended up doing so. I know, smack. Smack, smack, smack. Get lots of smacks. Bro, you've been doing so good. Years you're away from her. You're getting younger, firmer chicks, and you still you have this weakness for this girl. Woman. Grandmother. Uh, she claimed Tony had seen me at the store, which I knew was likely a lie since I had changed my, my look some. I didn't text with her very much, but she told me that she was back in town. Yeah, I'm back in town, hoping that you'll invite her over or something. A couple days later, I wanted to catch up with her to talk in person. Smack! Why? Why, why, why? You're a glutton for fucking punishment. Drama's all you know. I was done with her romantically, but that curiosity of how the hell she'd end up back here kept going in my head. Bro, who cares? My idea was to meet at a coffee shop or somewhere public. Oh, man. That's not how it went. She ended up giving me her address, wanting me to come over to her place in town to catch up. I know, need another smack. Of course that's what she wanted. I ended up at her place. Smack. God, you're a fucking moron. You know it. You know you're a fucking moron. Being cautious as it wasn't the nice part of town. She met me at the door and her dog sniffed a couple times and went to wagging her tail, remembering me And after two years. When I entered her place, I noticed that Melissa was there too. After we sat down in the living and kitchen kitchen area, her dog jumped on my lap and demanded attention. Well, the only one good of that group of whole a group of people is the dog. 
We talked for a little bit and found out that April had a mental breakdown not long after moving to another city. Bro, the entire time that you've known her was one big giant mental breakdown. I tried to press for more details, but she wouldn't budge on what happened in the other city. Who cares? Who the fuck cares? You were doing so good working out and, and seeing a therapist. Do you think your therapist would have liked this? Do you think your therapist would agree with you talking to her, having any communication whatsoever? Clearly, you didn't block her. Well, I mean, you did block her, but she found other ways to get to you. And now you're going to her place. She told me that Melissa and Tony had to go to the other city to rescue her, and she'd be homeless and living on the streets if it wasn't for them. Not your problem. She looked like she had aged well over 10 years in the two years since I had last seen her. She and Melissa proceeded to light up cigarettes and start smoking right in front of me, saying how she's dealing with long effects from the bug that she acquired during the early days of the pandemic post-breakup. Again, not your problem. I doubt smoking helps when recovering from that and will probably make it worse. I pressed her what store uh, Tony had seen me in when she claimed she didn't know and tried to change the subject. Because she was lying. Whenever, she, whenever her lips are moving, she's lying. She claimed to have lost weight, but I could really see she uh, really hadn't lost any. Thinking of her losing weight made me think of the saggy things being much worse. It made me shudder to think about, I feel bad for the next guy. Yeah, but you were with, you were the dumbass I was with her before for four years with her sagging things. She probably didn't wear a bra much, so she probably sagged way more than she should have for someone her age. She claimed to be in therapy, but then again, that's a very loose term for her. Well, loose is the only thing that's a good description of her. I learned that she got rehired with a state agency that she had worked at before. This wacko works at a state agency. This is a perfect example of <laughs> government workers. I know not all are like this, guys, but I'm sure there isn't one guy watching that hasn't dealt with some government worker at some point that was completely unqualified, complete fucking idiot, attitude, all those things. You ever go to the fucking DMV? That's all I need to say. Tony, her son-in-law, finally showed up and handed her a cigar, which she quickly cut open and started to fashion a blunt out of. I don't like weed or cigarettes and don't drink. When she almost had the blunt finished, I excused myself to leave. Her poor dog really didn't want me to go. She was about to light up as I left her place. Yeah, the dog's probably like, get me away from these wackos. Poor dog. I left feeling like things happened for a reason. I dodged a bullet knowing she could have dragged me down too. What do you mean, dragged you down? She dragged you down for four fucking years, and she's still dragging you down because you come to see her. Seeing her again made, me feel, made any good memories of her evaporate completely after I'd seen what she had become. What do you mean what she'd become? What do you mean good memories? From what you're telling me, there were no good memories. You had fucking Stockholm Syndrome when you're with her. He says, you're right, SSM, and most guys that write in, they always come back. When an ex comes back around, it's for a reason and usually not a good one. Most women don't make sound decisions after breakups, especially if they have previous issues. Knowing what I know now, I should have told my brother to delete her message and forget about it. In other words, you're saying that you should have told your bro when she reached out through his phone that he should delete and not tell you because you have no self-control when it comes to this woman. You just had to know, that type of thing. No, you wanted to see her and old feelings are erupting in spite of all that. I'm in a much better place financially and mentally. My advice is don't get involved with a woman that is married or has a boyfriend. A cheater is always a cheater and will end up cheating on you too. Well, no shit. I told you that. I've been saying that since the beginning. And you probably heard that in the other R Pill content before I was even on YouTube. You know? Yeah, it's not your fault. If you're involved with her, guys, if you're involved with a woman and she's married and has a boyfriend and you honestly do not know, that's not your fault. You should obviously do some digging and investigating, but then once you find out, you should get out of there and tell them, but be careful when you do that. He says, if you're in your 20s or 30s and she's older, hit it, quit it, and never commit to it. Older women are, there, are for practice. If she's a single mom, she's a single mother, even if her kids are grown. Watch out for red flags. We'll save you from dealing with a lot of drama and waste of time. Never lose your frame. Either she's in your frame or not in the picture at all. Keep up the good work, SSM, and have a good day. Well, it's a very abrupt ending, and he's sharing his wisdom now, years later. But, bro, with all due respect, given your actions, and if you would have, when it ended a couple years prior to you seeing her again and you never saw her again, a lot more guys would have had respect for you. But the fact that then she reached out to you through your friend and you went to see her and all that, a lot of guys are going to be like, yeah, I'm not going to take advice from this guy. But hopefully, though, you've learned since then. You haven't seen her then, and you truly are working on yourself. And if you have finally learned, then good. I applaud your, I applaud that, and you're obviously still, I guess at this point, maybe you're in your late 30s or 
early 40s. So you got your whole life ahead of you. I'm just hoping like hell you truly learn. So you, oh, this is why I always say, guys, you got to dig for the red flags. Don't just look at, look for them. Dig. And you spend a long time getting to know them. And you really can't trust the word anymore because I've done a lot of stories that guys are writing about. <laughs> They're with a woman for a while and they thought it was their girlfriend. And boom, she has a boyfriend or fiance or married. You know, I mean, that guy could show up at your house with a weapon and do something to you or something to someone you care about. But guys, the second you, you start discovering these things, get out of town. This guy stayed for years. And, this, and again, I'm glad he, he's writing and letting us learn from his mistakes. But still, my God, bro, there's so many mistakes here. I can't begin to get, come up with a number for that. But if you learn, you learn. Good for you and all that. So guys, let's learn from his story here. Let's let's not make these mistakes. Take your time. And, and the second any of these tactics come about, get out of there. It's not worth it. But also, this comes back to why it's so important, guys, from an early age, Doing things to improve yourself, to improve your self-esteem, to improve who you are. Because when you think you're dog shit and nobody wants you, you'll take what you can get, anything. And if you grew up in drama and you think that's that's normal, this is what you get. This is why I say to the guys out there that have really bad marriages and there's fighting all the time. And there's no love and it's just a big mess. But stay in it for the kids. Yeah, I get you want to protect the kids and don't want to live in a broken home. But if kids are in, in the middle of all the drama going on... They may end up in that in, in their neck and later in life with their husbands or wives because that's all they know. And of course, paying attention to the family. So a lot of lessons in this story, guys, this wacko story here. All right, guys, that's it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. Be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. I'll catch you next time.